Hey guys, it's the Electrical Code Coach. Today we're going to be looking at the top 10 code articles you should be familiar with and memorize for residential. This is volume one. We're going to have several volumes and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first article that you're going to want to be familiar with is Article 100. Now, Article 100 definitions apply code-wide. So no matter where you are at in the code, chapters 1 through 8, the anything informative in the annexes, chapter 9 tables, any of these definitions listed here applied code-wide. Now, if you go to a specific article and you go to the dot two section, if there are any specific definitions for that article, they're going to be listed in dot two. So 210.2, 220.2, and it'll have definitions right there that apply only to that article. You can't take definitions from that dot two section and apply it to the previous or any other section in the code book. But article 100 definitions are code wide. Okay, so number two, one that you're going to want to be very familiar with is 110.3b. This is installation and use. Guys, our whole career and industry hinges on this one code. Okay, any inspector can hit you if, uh, God forbid, you were to ever go to the court of law, this code is going to be brought up. Okay, it says installation and use. Listed or labeled equipment shall be installed and used in accordance with any instructions included in the listing or labeling. So I pray you never have to go to court for anything, whether you're an inspector or installer. But if you do, and we'll say a compressor burn up, in the judge's hand and in the lawyer's hand is going to be a list of instructions. It's going to be for that piece of equipment. That's a legal binding document. And we're required as installers and inspectors to make sure that it's installed according to those specifications. We're in a very legalistic trade. You just have to do everything you can to safeguard yourself. But at the end of the day, guys, we're supposed to install it according to how it's listed or labeled. Any major, you know, um, any major change or any major, uh, you know, deviation from those listing and label instructions could land us in trouble. Um, you know, we don't live our career like that. We do good work. Um, you know, we do solid work. If we don't know what we're doing, we stop and say, hey, let me pick up the phone. But you have to install it according to the listing and labeling instructions. So let's go ahead and move on to number three. All right, so this is uh, 210.8. This is ground fault protection for personnel. This is one you're going to want to just be obsessed with. All these locations under here are dwelling units. Through here, when you get into Part B, it goes into other than dwelling units, and it'll list you know commercial kitchens, different areas that you're required to have GFCI protection, uh, you know dishwasher circuits. This section here, all the way to 210.9, you're going to just want to read it just verbatim. You're going to want to read it straight out of the code book. You're going to want to be able to um, really quote it almost verbatim. This place, this place, this place. Spend some time here. Guys, you're in no hurry. You want to be excellent. You want to succeed. You want to be superior. You want to set yourself apart. I tell you, nobody ever <laughs> became anything by, you know, you know, being average and, you know, being an average learner. Listen, don't be a follower. Be a student. Don't be a follower. Be a student. So study this stuff and, you know, enrich your career, enrich your life in, you know, safer installations and you just become a better, you know, person and installer. So let's go ahead. Um, let's go to 210.12. I wanted to include this for res the residential series. So 210.12 is going to be all of your arc fault requirements. It has expanded greatly in the 2017. It pretty much encompasses the whole house house besides a couple exceptions, you're going to want to take your time and read this as well. So take your time, invest in your career. Um, this is a big one, guys. Uh, 210.8 and 210.12, there's going to be very little mercy if you have to go to a court of law. Okay, uh, You just have to be uh, super careful in this area. GFCI protection and AFCI protection is, is the new minimum. And you may live in a state that has backed down from that. You follow whatever your state ordinance is, okay? But if you're following it by the code book, there's going to be, and if you're in an area that does straight code book or pretty much, you know, straight code book, you're going to have to install it according to those things. Yes, it costs money. You know, yes, it can add to the time and installation and troubleshooting. 
But I'm telling you guys, there's going to be very little grace if something were to ever happen on GFCI and AFCI protection if someone were to get hurt or if some, you know, a catastrophe were to happen. So just guard yourself, guys. We just got to stay um, We just got to stay diligent, protect ourselves, know your craft, know what you're doing. This is not a game. You know, we're out here grinding, trying to make other people's homes safer. Okay, that's what we're doing. So let's keep going. All right, so number five is cord and plug connected equipment. These are two uh, numbers that I would just I would recommend that you memorize. So cord and plug connected equipment that is not fastened in place. This is your drills, vacuums, an air compressor that's not fastened in place that is easily moved. So so cord and plug connected equipment not fastened in place. The rating of any one cord and plug cord and plug connected utilization equipment that is not fastened in place shall not exceed 80% of the branch circuit ampere rating. Have you ever noticed that the uh, vacuums are rated 12.5 amps, 80%, or something's rated up to 16 amps, it's 20% or 80%, so uh, it's 20% less than the overall. So the reason is, is that the code requires that none of those be more than 80%. So if you are doing the math and you're laying out a circuit and you know that they're going to have this appliance, it's going to be movable, but it's going to be fixed at that place, you have to consider if it's more than 80% of that branch circuit, you're going to need to run a dedicated circuit to it. So it doesn't, um, so it offsets the load. It would then require, if it was 81% of the circuit, if it was 17 amps, it would need its own dedicated circuit. Same thing with number two. Utilization equipment fastened in place, the total rating of utilization equipment fastened in place other than luminaries shall not exceed 50% of the branch circuit ampere rating. So if it's fixed in place, a um, disposal, a dishwasher, and that's an excellent point. So a lot of times we'll share the circuit for the disposal and the dishwasher. Perfectly fine, up to code, no problem. They're both fixed in place as long as as neither one of them is not more than 50% of the branch circuit. It must not exceed it. The verbiage here, let's look, shall not exceed 50%. So it can be 50%. So that dishwasher could be 10 amps and the disposal could be 10 amps and you legally put them on the same circuit. But if you have a dis, uh, dishwasher, which I just ran into one yesterday during an inspection, um, is 10.5 amps. So no longer can the dishwasher and the disposal be on the same circuit. Not more than one fixed piece of equipment can be more than 50% of the branch circuit rating. So, like I said, you just watch your numbers. With 15 amp circuits, that would be 7.5. At that point, you'd be required to run a dedicated circuit for that, um, for that load. All right, let's move on to number six. And this is re uh, receptacle spacing. Guys, this is uh, really important for residential. So you're going to start down here in 210.52, starting in A, and it goes one all the way through, and it goes a long way through kitchens and countertops and how to space everything. So um, receptacles should not be installed that no point uh, measured horizontally along the floor line is more than six feet. There are uh, lots of rules and exceptions here, small appliance circuits, island, peninsula. Take your time reading this stuff. Um, you know, it's just another feather in your hat, saves you time in installing, saves you time in um, material. Knowing your code saves you money. Um, it does. It saves you money, so especially on wire and different things like that. So take your time, read in 210.52, and go through there, and you can, um, it's a really good read, really good to know. All right, so we are on number seven. All right, number seven is going to be, and this appears is going to appear in a lot of our videos, guys. It's table 240.6A. So it's the standard ampere rating for fuses and inverse time breakers. So this is going to tell you the standard rating. Have you ever came up with a load calc or seen a piece of equipment and it said 47 amps? Well, they don't make a 47 amp breaker, and often, depending on the type of equipment, they're going to allow you to use the next size up. So typically, motor overload um, in typical motor overload questions, you'd have to choose the next sides down. But when you're choosing standard breakers, you know, you came up with a 46 amp load, you would just choose the next size up. So I have a full 10 free week course, a free 10 week course 
on that if you want to check it out. And uh, it goes more in depth with this. But this is a great table for your standard breakers. You're out in the field, you're doing something, you'll say, hey, I really need a 35 amp breaker. Do they make it? Yes, they do. So getting a hold of it may be a little bit harder, but they do make it. And technically, if your inspector wanted to hit you, if you had a 33 amp load, uh, he would want, you know, could technically make you use a 35 amp breaker. So that's a really good table to know. Let's move on to number eight. Number eight is one of my favorite tables. It's 300.5. This just gives you instructions on how deep your conduit or wire needs to be run. So real quick, we'll go over the table. I have more videos that are more in depth. We have the location of the wire. We have the type, pipe, or um, the type wire. And then we have the depths. So just be very careful when you read this because you want to make sure that you read, I really encourage you to read all the sections before making your selection because they will make small adjustments here that will change it here. So you don't want to have to dig 24 inches if you only have to dig 18. So 300.5 is a great one to know for residential. And let's go to number nine. Now this is one for, a lot of these are universal that you'll see in the commercial video as well, but this is one that you just got to fall in love with. This is our primary impacity table. It's 310.15B16. And when you get to the 2020 code, it's going to go back to 310.16. And um, I love this table. Here is your gauge wire. Here are your type insulations. And here are the 60, 75, and 90 degree C column. If you notice, I've carefully highlighted mine to split the aluminum and copper clad from the copper. I've got lots of videos on how to deal with ampacity, ampacity adjustment. Just wanted to show you the table today. This is a great table. You can write, um, you might want to write uh, Romex right here or you can write NM because when you're selecting Romex you must use the 60 degree C column and I have more information on that. But this is a really good table and uh, we're going to move on to number 10. All right, so the number 10 Thing that I would recommend, articles that I recommend that you fall in love with and memorize for residential, volume one is article 334. So this is NM cable. This is Romex cable. This is one of the greatest articles in the code book for residential. I love residential work. I love commercial work. I love it all. So um, kind of a goober, but that's just part of it. Uh, so this is going to tell you everything to do with type NM. Use is permitted. Use is not permitted exposed work, how to follow the surface, how to protect it from physical damage, unfinished basements or crawl spaces. This is an important code. Um, one thing I want to point out here is take your time and read this. It allows you to staple to the bottom of the stud for certain size cables, how to deal with going through parallel members, how to do access and attics, your bending radius, radius how to secure and support it, 334.30. Um, we learned about the .30s in a recent video here. Um, wiring devices without a box. I mean, it just goes through so many things. How to deal with ampacity, and this is where the 60-degree rule comes in. So uh, construction specif specifications for, you know, more for manufacturing. But, guys, Article 334 um, is a place that you can just spend a lot of time in. It's got so much cool information there. I really just want to see you guys grow. I want to see you win. If there's anything I can do to help you in life or business, we'll be back with Volume 2. We're going to pick up at Article 334. There's a lot more things that you can learn and master for residential, but this will get you guys going. I hope you have a great day. If there's anything I can do for you in life or business, I'll do anything in my power to help you become all you can be. I just want to see you guys win. You guys have a great day. Thanks.